Welcome back. Hi, Matthew. How are you? How are you, Matthew? Hey, doing great, huh? Yes, I can hear you. Hello. Hi. Hi. What's up? Yeah, it's great. How are you? Good, good, good. Good to have you back. All right. So, um, what's so? So today we are going to be having an environmental discussion, and we will be doing a reading called the. Uh, it's a Canadian newspaper, and it's called National Energy Board announces companies must set aside money to abandon pipelines. Huh. Um, a lot of the time, uh, well, I found this article interesting because uh, when we abandon stuff, um, at least it's tradition to just think, just throw it away, just throw it away, and then not think about it ever again. But a lot of the times when you just throw away something, unfortunately, we don't think about the environmental repercussions of just throwing it away. It's well, at least I think it's part of like the selfish aspect of living in a well, place. What to throw away? What to throw away? Like garbage? To throw away? To throw away? Yeah. Yes, garbage. Uh, it's sort of slang for to dispose of. I throw away my candy wrapper. I throw away my soda bottle. Now at least we have recycling, which is. Uh, we have recycling and compost, which is uh, which are two ways that at least uh, people are learning uh, social responsibility to the environment. Now um, people are being encouraged to separate their throwawayables into recycling regular trash and food waste, which is really good. Um, that, uh, well, those were some things that came up for me when I saw this article about um, setting aside money to properly abandon pipelines. Do you know what a pipeline is, Matthew? Well, it depends. Uh, what do you mean by pipe? Pipeline is a uh, thing uh, that uh, water goes through. When, yeah. Uh, comes yes. to you to your apartment, for example. Yes. Um, in this case, this article is talking about like the oil pipeline that okay. runs through Canada and Alaska. Okay. I think the U.S. at least is getting oil from some of the oil reserves up in Alaska. And also, you can use the pipeline metaphorically, like uh, not in direct sense, like pipeline, yeah. for example, of I, for example, I constructed the pipeline. And then yes. now I have uh, like lots of money. Good. Is that okay? Yes. Yes. You can use pipeline metaphorically. Yes. Yep. Good. Can you give uh, me a proper example? A proper example of what? Uh, using metaphorically. Um, that idea is being processed. We're putting it through the pipeline, and when it's done, hopefully, it will be more okay. developed. Thanks. 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 Great. I like that. Cool. 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 Yeah. Um, okay. I realized I didn't give my standard introduction. We are broadcasting our all of the lessons now, so we're supposed to kind of say who we are and stuff. So hi YouTube. Hi Verbling. The rest of Verbling. I'm Narelle, and I teach on Verbling. This is my daily, weekly environmental discussion class where we read an article together, it's a different article each class, and we discuss it and we discuss also how to navigate around technical vocabulary. Um, it, this is a class where we are uh, learning and discussing, um, we are discussing and learning how to read academic literature. Um, and I'm, I'm super concerned about the environment, and so I really enjoy sharing environmental issues with, with everybody. Um, follow me on Verbling if you have not already to get updates on my classes. I'm available for private one-on-one -on -one tutoring. I'm from New York City originally. I just moved to Seoul, Korea, Seoul, South Korea, and I teach standard American English. 
So what do you do there in South Korea? What? Say what do you do in South, in South Korea? Uh, well, I teach on Verbling right now, but I just got hired at an academy called Pedea Academy. It's um, a learning center for children, elementary school to middle school, um, advanced students. I'll be teaching English starting. I'll be teaching English to Korean children, uh, Korean that? students starting um, in February, February or March. Can I ask you what's the average salary there where you live now? Oh, yeah, like not, not yours, but uh, ranges anywhere from 2.1 million won upwards to like 3.8 million won if you or more if you've got experience, like if you teach at a university. No, um, dollars. Two point uh, like well. 2.1 million won is ever uh, is slightly less than 2,000. So it's easy to make about $2,000 here um, per oh, month. Okay. Um, a little bit more if you're more experienced. But, um, but it's a minimum wage in the U.S., like in the uh, States, like I, Nebraska. I don't know. No? I don't okay. know how I it know. compares. The minimum wage in the United States, I believe, is like $8 an hour now. Um, yeah, the, I'm the, from Chicago, so I know. The Korean standard of living is really, really wonderful. Um, or, I'm sorry, the cost of living in Seoul is really, really wonderful. I can have two meals a day for, uh, like, under $5. And it's really good food, and I'm so happy about that. Um, okay, so uh, let me move on to say hello to David. Hi, hi David. Hi, Norel. Good to see you again. Good to see you again. I like your new picture. Thank you. <laughs> Tell me about this picture. Uh, it's about a video game. Uh, it's like uh, uh, for Xbox uh, PlayStation. Oh. Yes, he I looks like very to, to play. scary. Is that, <laughs> your, is that your avatar? Is uh, that your avatar? Yes, actually, yes. <laughs> Oh, it's your avatar. Oh, it's so scary. It looks like a, a bad guy. Is it a bad, you're, no, you're a good guy. There's no such thing as bad guys and good guys in a video game, right? Everyone just sort of is fighting for justice, right? Right. I see. Um, very masculine. Like, all the characters in video games are so, like, <laughs> masculine and so feminine, depending <laughs> you design your avatar. I don't know anything about video games because I don't play them. Do you get to design your avatar? Like, did you decide how he would look? No, no. It's a photo of the main character of the video game. Oh, gotcha. I see. Okay. Thank you for sharing. That's awesome. And I think that video game animation is so beautiful and yes. um, so beautiful and the 3D and. Um, and the storylines are really awesome too. Sometimes uh -huh, and it right. takes so much effort to design. I don't know how video game designers can do it. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you, David. Hi, Wellington. Good to see you again. Hi, Hi Nor. Yeah. <laughs> I like your classes. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm so glad your you're classes. Here. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, okay, everybody. So um, I kind of did everything a little out of out of order today. My question, my discussion question, is simply: Have you or what? What do you know about oil pipelines, and if anything, <laughs> their abandonment? Can you tell that I know nothing about oil pipelines myself, and that's why my question is rather uh, open-ended? Uh, I don't know if anybody else does. You, maybe you have to be an engineer to really know about this. But I think it's an important issue because, uh, at least in the United States, oil is important. We get it. We pipe it through the Alaskan pipeline, and when there are pipeline busts, it is really, really bad for the wildlife. When we have oil busting all over the place, not good. Okay, so let's begin with Wellington. Wellington, do you know anything about oil pipelines? I don't know uh, so much because, uh, like you said, uh, is a 
uh, so is a subjective uh, many, um, very specific uh, yeah. so here here in Brazil uh, of course we use oil but uh, I think uh, a little uh, f fewer than in the United States yeah. we, we, we have here we, we have um, uh, big uh, much water and uh, the energy is uh, based based on elect electric power. Uh, Ooh, like like so like a dam, you mean? Like a dam? Like, dam? Uh, no, 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 no. Electric electric power uh, through the. Uh, I don't I don't know the the name the specific name uh, but uh, the, the energy is uh, is generated through the water the 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 tank is the I sorry I don't know the no, you're doing name. Good. you're doing well I don't know the specific name either so you're doing great um this class is about learning to navigate around scientific technical words without knowing the technical words. So you're doing great. <laughs> All right. Matthew. Um, you find I find it. <laughs> Good. Okay. All right, Matthew, I know that I sort of asked you this question already, but I'm going to ask you again. Uh, what, if anything, do you know about oil pipelines specifically and their responsible abandonment. Uh, the last word, could you explain, please? Uh, abandonment. Responsible what? Yeah. Abandonment is like uh, to 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 ditch something is the slang word to to leave to decide you don't need it anymore and so you just leave it oh. there. Kind of like an abandoned building, like when you decide you don't want to live in a house anymore and then the house just kind of wastes away. It starts kind of looking like a haunted house because no one's lived in it forever. Like an abandoned building, it usually like the windows cave in. Like there's an abandoned oh. building on the street I walk on, it smells like dead bodies are coming out of there. Yeah. So could you repeat your question? Do you see the discussion question in the verbaling chat box? No, I'm sorry. I can't see any chat. Do you have Could Google you... Hangouts? No, chat no. Okay, so the question is, what do you know about oil pipelines? And if anything, what do you know about their abandonment? Clear. So basically, what I, you know, I know that um, extraction of uh, oil, it's a very, um, it's quite, uh, not uh, good for nature. What I mean that uh, people put the nature. We can, we know as an example, like an ocean, like near the Florida, I think, uh, a couple of years ago was like some kind of disaster. BP. Yeah. So, I, I don't remember what, but uh, there was like a situation. And to answer the question about pipelines, I think that. Um, in this situation, it happens oil spills. So basically, uh, oil could spill from that pipeline, and the nature and it's affected the nature. So basically, the surroundings where is that pipeline located, and um, like uh, birds die, like animals, like uh, trees are affected by the oil spill, and things like that. Uh, that's what I know off the top of my head about that. So to answer uh, more qualified, you should re read like uh, uh, an article or something. Yeah, that, that was actually a really good answer. That was a really good oh. answer. Yeah. Uh, we don't want to abandon these pipelines without maybe draining them of oil so that uh, oil residue doesn't gush all over the place when inevitably the pipeline cracks from age and then ruins everything around it. Yeah, that's, um, I would agree. Go ahead. All right. Um, David, can you add to that discussion? Yes, Norel. Well, uh, oil, oil pipes, uh, 
Well, in Colombia we have some of, some of them. Uh, oh, you do in Colombia. Yes, sure, for the oil companies. So yeah. they have these uh, oil pipelines in the middle or in the center of the country or in the more or less in the S and they go until the ocean. So they transport the the oil from the from that part mm -hmm. and for the and at the end for the chips for for example we export petroleum to South Korea. Oh you export petroleum to South yes, Korea. Oil. Right. That, that's so, cool. Thank you for sharing that because I have been learning all about where Korea ex uh, imports their yes, things, true. and it's all obviously very different from what I'm used to. So yes, a little bit of oil, and when the oil is finished, I think the oil companies abandon uh, the these pipelines. Yeah, because it doesn't make sense because the oil is finished. Right. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Uh, really, really good discussion, everybody. Everyone really added to that. So I'm impressed. You all knew more than I did, I think. So, or at least maybe we all knew something together because it's not something that I've thought a lot about. Um, I think you know something more than us that you don't want to share <laughs> in the beginning of the class. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's begin. National Energy Board announces companies must set aside money to abandon pipelines properly. Okay, David, I want David to start us off today. David, please read the first four paragraphs. Uh, let me make that bigger. Okay, there we go, David. It's, it's okay. Uh, let me just... Okay, right. Pipeline companies under federal jurisdiction, such as Enbridge and Kinder Morgan, which have plans for major oil projects to the west coast of BC, must create funds to pay for abandoning pipelines by the start of next year. The National Energy Board announced that starting January 1st, January 1st 2015, Pipeline companies must create a mechanism to start setting aside money to pay for abandoning pipelines through measures such as a trust or a letter or credit from a major bank or a surety bond. While pipelines can last for decades, the NEB wants to ensure that rehabilitation and environmental costs don't fall on landowners private private or crown when they are shut down. The NE, NIB estimates the cost to abandon and rehabilitate land for pipelines it has jurisdiction over is two point two billion dollars. The NEB which has authority over pipelines that cross provi provincial boundaries note that most companies have many years to fund these future costs. Good. Yes. Very, very nice. Okay. So let's go over some words for pronunciation and then we'll go over vocabulary and main idea. Okay. So please, um, David, repeat. Provincial. Yeah. Provincial. Good. Boundaries. Boundaries. Good. One more time. Boundaries. Boundaries. Yeah, good. Um, so yeah. I know that there's an A there. Um, uh -huh. It looks like it would be boundaries, but we it's the silent. A is the actually, A is actually silent. Uh, don't ask me why. Boundaries. <laughs> boundaries. Okay, right. Boundaries. boundaries. Yeah. Boundaries. Rehabilitate. Rehabilitate. Good. Abandon. Abandon. Good. Um. Jurisdiction. Jurisdiction. Good. Okay. So Wellington, what are a couple of the main ideas in that in those four paragraphs? Um, they talk about the the necessity. The uh, the companies must be uh, uh, must be pay uh, some money to the government. 
because they they abandon the pipelines. Yes. Uh, the the pipelines uh, they uh, they had they they have a, a long uh, they have, they they have a long life is and the nature is uh, can be damaged because this yeah. because the the situation yeah it really ruins the value of the uh, the land decades later I mean what person is going to be able to buy land that has oil spilled all over it yeah really good really good Wellington you were very articulate there good. Thank you. Okay, so there are a couple words here that I don't even know what they they are. <laughs> yeah, many words, <laughs> many words. <laughs> um, let's start. Uh, we'll need a dictionary here. Okay, Matt, jurisdiction. Okay. What is jurisdiction? It's a uh, physical and non-physical um, responsibility of the say of the government. Yeah. Um, no, no, of the laws. So basically, yeah. um, if you are in the South Korea, you under the uh, South Korean jurisdiction. If you're in yeah. the United States, you should convey to the laws laws from the United States. Oh, very good. I'm, I am in Chicago, so basically, I am under the Chicago uh, jurisdiction. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Jurisdiction, legal system. Jurisdiction is the legal system of wherever you are living. We have federal, we have, in, in the United States, we have federal, we have state, um, we have local jurisdiction, legal system. Um, like a, a, da a David. So um, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, um, I'm going to add one point. Uh, Matthew might know something about this. So, in the state of Colorado, marijuana was made legal um, under state jurisdiction. Um, federal jurisdiction, like, technically rules over state jurisdiction, but it seems like state jurisdiction um, had... It seems like our state government sometimes is stronger than our national government. So, I'm going to ask David, uh, what... Because, uh Sorry, because the country is named United States, so basically each state is like a small country inside a big country. Yeah, that would, that would, that's pretty precise, actually. Good. Okay. Um, David, in your country, um, would you say that uh, state or national jur or federal jurisdiction uh, seems to wield a heavier hand? Sorry, Noel, I couldn't understand the question. Do you think that in your country, federal jurisdiction or state jurisdiction is more present in your city? Do you follow state laws or do you? Ah, okay, I got it. Well, like I live in the capital of the country in Bogota. La uh, is a different kind of state. Like in Washington, is like DC, a mm -hmm. uh, capital district or more something like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, the laws for Bogota uh, are kind are a little bit different from the rest of the state because like it's the main capital. Um, we have like a fair uh, a different jurisdiction from the rest of the of the states. But oh, it's right. only Bogota. Oh very good. Great answer. Uh, Bogota has its own jurisdiction. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Good. All right. So I'm going to say hi to Simone. Hi, Simone. Hi. Hello, Nora. How are you? Oh, there's your face. You're so pretty. No, that, no. That's Simone. No. <laughs> it was did a everyone, mistake. Did everyone see what Simone looks like? She's so pretty. Oh my God. Oh, thank you. No, oh my gosh, I'm so bad. But she wears uh, eyeglasses. How do you know she's pretty? What are you? She wasn't wearing oh. eyeglasses. She was not wearing eyeglasses. <laughs> Only you saw me, thank God. <laughs> oh, she wear eyeglasses. <laughs> okay, okay, yes, I wear. <laughs> sometimes, right? <laughs> yeah, sometimes. I'm sure she was very smart. And <laughs> Um, oh my gosh! Okay. <laughs> okay. 
I'll, I'll come back to you, Simone. Um, okay, thanks. <laughs> all right, Ken, what about Ken? Hi, Ken. Ken, are you there? Yes. Oh, there yes. you go. Hello, yes. hello. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Your microphone has loaded. You're good. You're here. <laughs> All right, everybody. Um, so let's go back over some of this vocabulary here. Um, Ken, why don't you tell us what's the meaning of rehabilitation uh, in, as it pertains to the environment, to nature, to land, particularly, I guess. Ken? Oh, his microphone might be out. Um, oh, okay. What about uh, Simone? Can you explain what rehabilitation is? Rehab uh, uh, rehabilitation is uh, when you, uh, for example, can I can I speak about? I don't know what's the topic, but he, rehabilitation is like, for example. For example, when you are a uh, drug addict and uh, you are, maybe you go to a hospital, something like that, you have a treatment and it's like kind of he rehabilitation. So yeah. you are not a uh, drug addict anymore. Good. Yeah. Yeah, that's the other example. And, and yeah, they are similar um, definitions. Good. Yeah. So um, it's taking something that's damaged and uh, slowly, surely uh, working with it or the person to make them better, to heal it. So uh, rehabilitation is to take somebody who's addicted to drugs and like healing their bodies, healing their minds, healing their hearts so they are not addicted anymore. In this case, uh, we're talking about the environment. To rehabilitate the environment is to um, slowly um, reverse environmental damage. Um, yeah. The article is titled, um, if you scroll up in the chat box, uh, you can see what the title is. Um, National Energy Board announces companies must okay. set aside money to abandon pipelines. So it's about oil pipelines and how um, if we just leave them in the environment to like rot without properly um, abandoning them, uh, they eventually explode and leak oil all over the environment, making the value of the land null and void, making it impossible to you know, really uh, use the land if it's got oil over, all over it. So rehabilitation of damaged land from oil pipelines. Okay, cool. Yeah, good. Um, so uh, great example, Simone. Uh, Matthew, can you give us an example of rehabilitation? Or, or why don't you give us um, an environmental specific example of rehabilitation? Okay. okay. So, on the top of my head, I would say that um, on the top of my head, I cannot think of anything. But, um, okay, for example, if uh, some bad things happen, like maybe, let's say, uh, a huge, uh, huge, 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 uh, huge blast. Yeah, do you call that blast? Or? Uh, yeah, uh-huh. When something blow up, yeah. Do you call that blast? Uh, yeah, yeah, yes. That's a blast. Um, an explosion. Yeah. Yeah, or, or explosion of any anything, and after that, there is like lots of mass of uh, lots of. Uh, oh my God! You put me on the spot. I don't, I cannot uh, think of any examples of the. Rehabilitation. Rehabilitation. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, really good. Gr great. Thank you. Good example. You've got some groovy, groovy background noise. Oh, okay. <laughs> You've got some a jam in the background there. Good. Okay. So, um, okay, one more word here. Provincial. Provincial. Does any. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Does anyone know what provincial means? Shout out. Mm, yes. Okay. What's provincial mean? A kind of uh, pro, uh maybe uh, it's uh, n named after province. 
kind of that district or yeah. maybe, uh, describe a uh, border or something, territory. Yes. I think you are. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Provincial in this case. Yes. This is a Canadian article, Vancouver. Uh -huh, um, they're not divided into states, they're divided into provinces. So uh, state boundaries, provincial boundaries, same thing. Uh -huh. uh, with provinces. Yeah. And I think the difference between a province and a state is just, just might be how they're governed. Um, might be slightly mm -hmm. different. Yeah. Uh, very, very good, Ken. Um, so uh, are, are there provincial boundaries in Japan or are there mm -hmm. I feel like there are prefectures. Uh, yes, prefecture. I don't know. Other countries use prefecture system. Yeah, it's called prefecture. Yeah, I, I wonder. Um, I know that that kind of like government vocabulary. We can talk about that. Like, Maybe what does that sound like? What is the difference, province, state, and prefecture? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Maybe. Um, that's like a whole different. Plan. Let's see. Uh, okay. Provincial versus prefecture. Let's see if we can figure that out briefly. Oh, province versus prefecture, that's what I meant. Uh, provinces of Japan. The modern prefecture system was a... St okay, okay. Okay, let's see if this is... This is not, like, going to be, like, a, a good source. It's called straight down. Um, closest prefecture. Okay, so that is a whole other class worth of... Wow. <laughs> it, sounds like, it sounds like us, um, uh, just the... There are differences between the way mm. provinces, prefectures, and states are governed, and I, I do not have the uh, the uh, capacity to teach that right now. <laughs> okay, they, they, thank you very much. But yeah, uh, they all kind of mean something similar. Uh, Simone says that in Brazil we have prefectures too. Oh, and in Buenos Aires, so there are provinces within Buenos Aires, and then prefectures within Brazil. So prefectures might be kind of like a bigger form of government. And Buenos Aires is, is a city in Brazil. So, okay, so it's sort of like uh, provinces might be a smaller government within a prefecture. But I can't, I, yes. I can't tell you for sure. Oh, that's true? Actually, sorry, actually Buenos Aires is in Argentina. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they, have, <laughs> they have provinces. Uh -huh. And here... Here in Brazil, you ha we have states, uh -huh. and within these states, we have prefectures. So, oh. You know. oh, I see, I see. Within the states, there are prefectures. Yes, a lot. Whoa. Huh. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> now, I'm now I'm wondering, like, how prefectures differ from, like, you know, we call it local government in the United States. Uh, maybe it's the same. It's it might be really local. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you, um, thank you very, very much. That was all um, some really good information. I appreciate it. Thank Not you. at all. All right. So um, let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. Um, Simone, why don't you read the next four paragraphs here? Four. Okay. <laughs> Oh, well, they're little, they're little, it's not too long. Okay, okay. Uh, the board will require almost all pipeline companies to provide a trust agreement, uh, surety bonds or letter of credit for approval. The NEB said in a news release, the board will regularly review the company's estimated estimates of abandonment costs, the coverage provided by the set-aside me mechanisms, and the assumptions about how those funds will grow, the amount of money set aside by companies must be included in annual reports uh, filled, filled with the NEB. The federal regulator had warned pipeline companies in 2009 that it intended to require companies to set aside money for pipeline abandonment. Uh, Enbridge has existing abandonment uh, liabilities of more than one billion uh, dollars, while Kingdom Morgan has costs of more than 
350 million dollars according to NEBay estimates. Wow. Okay. Okay. Wow. That's a, that's a lot of money. Okay. Good. 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 Okay. So, uh, Daniel, why don't, or I'm sorry, David, why don't you give us some of a couple of the main ideas that you heard in that reading? Yes, Nora. Sure. Well, it says that the government is worried about the that the oil companies uh, uh, have to pay. They are trying to make a law for the oil companies uh, give money for abandon uh, these pipelines, and also the the article says that the amount of money is very high uh, according to some uh, stu studies that the that the NIB estimate yeah good very very good thank you thank you okay so um, a couple of pronunciation points uh, Simone please repeat after me mechanisms Mechanisms. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> what um, what syllable is most emphasized there? Mechme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first syllable. Mechanisms. Good, good. Okay. Assumptions. Assumptions. Good. Liabilities. Liability. Liabilities. Oh, yeah. I prefer to to say T sound. Liabilities. Yeah, that's perfect, actually. That's really good pronunciation of that word. Excellent. Okay, that's it. Good. Um, all right, so um, Wellington, why don't you tell us what are uh, what's the definition of liabilities? Liabilities. Liabilities. Um, liabilities. I don't know. Liabilities. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't know. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, li li liabilities. Uh, I, I remember. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, it's like um, found money. Uh, money. Um, uh, it's like it's 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 like shoes. It's like shoes. A uh, woman here in Brazil um, uh, buy a lot of shoes and put in the in the work done. They not use the shoes. <laughs> the, it, it, uh, is uh, this is money uh, stop it. Money that not uh, use it for nothing. <laughs> the shoes, <laughs> the shoes uh, stay in the work done. And and she uh, and they uh, are used one one time for per year. Uh -huh. uh, liability liability is money uh, reserved. Is money um, is money saved to pay something after a time after um, after uh, is money. Uh, um, is money saved to pay um, something in one time after? Oh, oh, wait, hold on. You are creating like the most beautiful definition of like some <laughs> completely different word actually. Liabi okay, so here let me think. Okay, Liab I want this to be clear. So liabilities is something else. I think that you mean like maybe funds in reserve. I know you have a, I know you're thinking of something really good. But it's not liability. Like liability is like it's kind of a that name. again. So liability is that. Yeah, exactly. Debt. debt, exactly. Oh, so Wellington, I could see where you were getting with that, but um, yeah, liability is like I'm liable to pay this if I if I accrue debt on my credit card, it uh, becomes my liability. There's oh, sorry, a sorry. negative connotation that I felt like you were missing. <laughs> yeah, so so um, it was almost like you were talking about like a savings account almost. Um, <laughs> the liability is is debt. Yes, it's and it's disadvantageous. Um, 
Yeah, exactly, Simone. Do you want to talk a little bit more about liabilities, Simone? Oh, actually, I uh, I know the meaning, but uh, I I don't know when I have to to have liabilities. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Is uh, uh, me as a person if I if I have to to pay some liabilities? I don't know. I yeah. think it's only companies. Yeah. I'm not sure. Well, liabilities are also risks. Debt is a form of a risk. Like if you hire an employee, if you hire an employee that is irresponsible on the workplace and they're always hurting themselves because they're reckless and they're not following company protocol, they become a liability to the company. Meaning, um, that, meaning that they are at a risk to the company. If the if the company keeps this employee on board without retraining them and the employee continues to uh, engage in poor, in risk-taking behavior that's you know not good for the company. So that employee is a liability, and you know could create debt for them. Um, uh, like okay, so abandonment liabilities, abandonment liabilities. So, so abandonment liabilities are an abandonment risks. Like so, for example, if if a company ab abandons a pipeline and the pipeline explodes and leaks oil all over this land, um, that's the liability. The liability is the abandoned pipeline and the risk the risk factor of it damaging the environment um, to the tune of one billion dollars worth of damage or more. It's like some sort of insurance. Um, we have liability insurance. We take out liability insurance to uh, cover any of those risks should they happen. Yeah, like um, all. Yeah, insurance is for the purpose of keeping us safe from our liabilities, financially safe from our liabilities. Like like an accident, like a car accident is a liability, and that's why we have auto insurance. Yes. Okay. Um, um, let's see, do we, should we go over liability a little bit more? I feel like, do you want to, does, um, like, Ken, can you add to the definition of liability there? Do you want to talk about an example of a liability? Um, no. <laughs> yeah. Right. So it sounds like debt. Uh, or obligation, mandatory debt or something. Yeah, it's an yeah. obligation. Mm -hmm. Good. 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 Uh, David, do you have any other examples of liabilities? No, no, I think you say all. <laughs> okay, yeah. Let's see if I can think of any other examples of liabilities. Like, um, oh, just malpract malpractice in general is a liability. Oh, that's why doctors have liability insurance. Um, like practicing medicine is wrought with so much liability that that doctors have to have. Well, at least doctors in the United States are responsible for having. I think it's actually called liability insurance, and it's meant to cover them should a patient ever sue them for uh, like maybe a surgery, a botched surgery or something. That's what li Yeah, that's what liability insurance is. It's what medical practitioners have. Uh, I, 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 I think one, one example here, money yeah. deposited with a bank becomes a liability of the bank. Oh, it's, it's, yes, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, because the money is the, is, is, is uh, uh, from one person and the oh. bank must be pay, 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 pay here after when, they need the, uh, the, the yes. The, if we deposit the money, need the money, and then the bank chooses to like use the money for its own purposes, the bank is liable for it. Yes. Good. Good. Um, Simone, do you um, have anything else to add to liability? No, thanks. All right. Sounds good. Okay. So, um, oh, set aside mechanisms. Uh, David, why don't you? give set-aside mechanisms a go. What does that refer to in this article? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, set-aside mechanisms is like uh, well, 
coverage provided. There's an assumption. Uh, uh, no, I am not to, uh, completely sure. Okay, so um, set aside. So let's let's divide this up. So set aside. To set aside means like, okay, um, I'm going to save one billion dollars in this account, and that is going to be the money that I have set aside, held in reserve for the purpose of um, funding the uh, proper the protocol, the safe protocol for abandoning this oil pipeline properly so it does not cause environmental damage in the future. To set aside, actually, Wellington, when he was giving the example of women who buy shoes and wear them once and then have them in the closet set aside for one day per year, that's an example of a set-aside mechanism. <laughs> yeah. um, Wellington. Was, was describing uh, set aside, reserves set aside. Um, in this case, they use the term mechanisms. Um, mechanisms are usually uh, like mechanical functions. It's a word, it's kind of like the noun form of mechanical. Me mechanical meaning like a machine. It's something, Actual, that, yes. something that works like mechanically, physically. Um, okay, the coverage mm -hmm. provided by their set aside mechanism. Well, really, estimates of abandonment costs. The coverage provided by their set aside mechanism. I guess I think that they may be using the word mechanisms here to refer to the processes, um, the processes, the processes for not only like providing funds for. I'm not even sure actually if they're referring to. The process of setting aside funds. I'm sure. I am sure. I think uh, it's about money. It's okay. like uh, they have to have some mechanisms to save money to oh. you know the funds. Mm -hmm. You know, those You're funds right. to yeah. grow. Yeah. Mechanisms to set aside that money, like ways in which they are. Retaining yes. those funds. Oh, yes. That's brilliant, Simone. Thank you. Oh my God, you're <laughs> brilliant. Um, thank you. We are we are wading through this article, and I am like right there with you. <laughs> Very good. Um, that was a really um, good interpretation of that. Of that. Good. Okay. So let's read a little bit further in this. In this um, in this article, so last three paragraphs for today. Who has not read yet? Wellington, have you read yet? No. Okay, Wellington, why don't you read the last three there? Okay. Um, the federal regulator had had warned pipeline companies in 2009 that is intended to require companies to set aside money for pipeline abandonment. Enbridge has existing abandonment liabilities of more than $1 billion, while Kinder Morgan has costs of more than $350 million, according to NNB estimates. Good. Why don't you read one more paragraph? One more. OK. Um, thus, do not include abandonment estimates for Enbridge's proposed 6.5 billion Norton Gateway oil pipeline, or Kinder Morgan 5.4 billion Trans Mountain oil pipeline expansion. Kinder Morgan spokesman, spokesman and Galarnik said their company has no issues with the NEB announcement, we support the NEB in their pursuit of clarity around estimating and pre-collecting the costs of abandonment, he said. Good. Okay. Um, excellent. So let's go over some vocabulary pronunciation, uh, Wellington. Please repeat. Abandonment. Abandonment. 
abandonment. Yeah, good. One more time. Abandonment. Abandonment. Yeah, much better. Abandonment. Four syllables. Which syllable okay. has the most emphasis? First, second, third, or fourth? Aben. Abandonment. Okay. Abandonment. I think I think it's this. A ben. 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 Yeah. Second syllable. Good. Good. Second. Okay. Okay. Pursuit. Pursuit. Good. Expansion. Expansion. Good. Um, and that's it. Very very good. Good reading. Okay. So. Nara. Nara, can I say something? Sure, yeah. We Brazilian people, we tend to say money, but uh, I think it's money. But Brazilian people, you tend to say money. Uh, uh, I think it's I think it's money. I, I don't know. I say money, money. So yeah, money. Not that different from the way Brazilian people say it. Money. I would say for emphasis on first syllable, right? Money, money. Yeah. You got any money? <laughs> that costs money. Money. <laughs> money. <laughs> yeah. Money. Yeah. All right. Very good. Um, okay. We have time for one word here, and I don't want to make it too hard because we don't have much time. <laughs> Ken, what does Trans Mountain imply here? Trans Mountain may be uh, over the mountain. Yes, it goes over. Over the mountain, or maybe through the mountain, exactly. Trans mountain, yeah, it goes across the mountain. That sounds pretty intense. Okay, so um, good. We don't have time for any more vocabulary, but that was some intense vocabulary. You are all excellent. Thank you. Um, that was hard reading, very advanced stuff. So can you give a pat yourselves on the back. All right. Bye. See ya. Thank you, Norel. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Thank you Bye so guys. much. See you soon, Laura. Bye, Valentin. Bye, bye.